Now, I'm looking for my next review. Well, basically... Yeah, I think I'm gonna review another PlayStation game. All right, let's see what we got. Uh, Shrek Treasure Hunt. It's probably a party game. That wouldn't really work during this time. Okay. Um, Spyro, Year of the Dragon. That would be a fun. That would be a fun review, but. I'm looking for something light. Okay, you're not even a PlayStation 1 game. What are you doing in there? Stuart Little 2. Yeah, fuck it. Stuart Little 2 for the PlayStation 1. R remember the movie? The, the movie about the little mouse? The mouse who got adopted by a normal family? Because they wanted to have a brother for their already son? But they were too lazy to fuck, so they just got a mouse that said, Bond with this. Bond with me, Jimmy. Well, that was the first movie. And last I checked, they didn't make a game for the first movie. Unless this game counts. <laughs> fuck is this game, man? Sewer Little 2 was a platformer game and was targeted for children who either loved the movie or wanted a new game. And mom was like, oh, this is based on the movie. This should be good enough. Which is kind of how I got the game. The objective of this game is quite simple. Collect diamond rings of different designs, collect cat food for the family cat, and explore each level with what it has to offer. All the levels are based on moments that happened in the movie or deeper dives to moments that happened so they can fill in gameplay and reach a quota. Why the fuck am I in the sewage and how the fuck did you get here? This game is, like I said, it's made for kids, so it's not a hard game. Once again, we will not be emulating this game, we are playing this straight off the PlayStation. So we'll get to see those movie scenes, even though I'm pretty sure that's still not a... Ah, fuck. You know, now that I think about it, it's something pretty funny I just remembered. The movie features a scene where George has a friend come over and he's like, Hey George, you wanna play PlayStation 2? And George is like, yo, sure dude. And then it makes you think why this game is on the PlayStation 1 and not the PlayStation 2. <laughs> At least Stuart Little 3 is on the PlayStation 2. They have no relation to the movie. Let's begin the game with Start New Game. You're given a little cutscene of Stuart waking up after a good night's sleep. Everyone knows that the mouse must be on the top bunk. To get down, he takes some zip line and rides a balloon, reads a note he was left? Cause that's just another morning thing in the little household. Good morning! Go to school? Is that a threat? Dear Stuart, I'm in deep, deep trouble. The evil Falcon's been forcing me to steal jewelry for him from the people of New York. Nope, just some random girl bird who needs help recapturing diamond rings she stole for a Falcon. We're gonna call him Drug Lord Falcon because I can do that. I have that power in these videos. We enter the first level, or actually the tutorial. You are brought around to learn how to attack, scale structures, learn the platform into the game as you make your way to the house. This process will take some time for you to complete as you can't skip ahead and do it at your own pace. It will go at the game's given pace. You can, however, skip right to the start of the game if you'd like. Each level consists of six diamond rings, 80 cat biscuits, and a movie clip, giving you a clip from the actual movie. You start in the kitchen here with a mini game and a spider? Well, since you're a mouse, your enemies will be bugs. Attack with the moves given and take them out, but they will respawn back after a certain amount of time. Collecting the cat food items will reward you any ring. Collecting 60 and bringing it to the cat bowl of the level will unlock that ring. Let's play the first mini game and Oh, Margolo, they didn't quite crop you quite well, did they? Probably ripped it from the movie and just kind of failed at the top of the head. That's okay, like, I'm any better. Whoops. The minigame is a train game. She's telling me it'll be tricky and will be very impressed if I beat it. 
I'll be very impressed if you can beat this challenge. Bitch, this is the first minigame presented to me. You think I'm gonna suck that badly? Oh, what the fuck is this shit? Wasn't this game made for kids? Complete the level and move on to the next area and proceed the level. This game is gonna be very rinse and repeat, so get used to the same game, just in different areas. Platform, mini games, collect, collect, collect some more, another mini game. Did I mention collecting? Of course the mini games are super unique and fun. Some games you fly a plane. Some games you ride the cart. Sometimes you find a face block. Excellent hunting, Stuart. You have found a face block. Also, this quote will haunt you every time you play. Uh, face block. <laughs> face block. Excellent hunting, Stuart! You found face block! In case you die or something, if you hit these spots, it'll set you up for a restart point. So if you do die, you'll restart in this spot. They are all over each level, so be sure to grab one if you're going to focus on that one area. If there's one thing that carried over from playing this game as a child to playing this now as a 23-year-old grown-up man, when I get up to these high areas, my feet get all tingly. It's so unsettling for me. I know it's virtual, but God, it really affects me. Zipline down and get... Face block! Another thing we can do to get rings is through a key and a lock. Another mini game involves you flying through rings in a plane. Yes, you're flying an RC plane in the house. And how the fuck is that not dangerous? Once we collect two rings, we are told that we can teleport to a new level. I guess this gives us the right time to discuss each level that we're about to discover in this game. Once you collect two rings, you can progress to Central Park. After six rings, you can be a good mouse boy and go upstairs. After 10, you can go to the sewers, all right. After 16, you go to the back alleys. Hold on, I really need to rewatch this movie. When was there a back alley? 22 gets to the garbage barge. Okay, how do you go from the safety of your own safe home to the fucking dumps where shit goes to rot? That is that is a huge jump from point A to B. After 30, you get to the boss battle with Drug Lord Falcon. I suppose I have to go to Central Park if I want to get a step closer to the garbage. We end to Central Park and no, this ain't Central Park. Aw, Stuart, you done it this time, you fuck! Hit the door! Stuart! And that's the damn reason we don't fly planes in the house, you stupid fuck! After flying across Central Park, and this isn't Central Park. This is a sandbox. Let's try this one again. We land in Central Park and begin to discover. And this is still not Central Park. Alright, let's keep going. I must have missed this in the past level, but... Here you see a paw print. If you grab this print, you'll be given the option to teleport from map to map quickly. You can also easily access this by just pausing the game and clicking visit Snowbell. So that defeats the fucking purpose of this paw print. The mini games here are a race with a bug and a boat ride. A race with a bug out though. Oh, that's how it's done. This dude's fucking kicking my ass. How the fuck am I supposed to beat him? Well, hey TZ the reviewer, you forgot to read the, the instructions. If you took a fucking second out of your day to read, you would fucking know that you need to read the instructions before jumping into races. Hurtful. After receiving the ring that doesn't bring you to one more ring before new level message, Stuart will pat himself on the fucking back like, I'm so good and you're so bad, losers. Or, I mean, that's what it sounds like to me. We continue to collect face blocks, and after collecting six, we collect the ring at the top of the shadow clock. After collecting the last block, Stuart proves he's a narcissistic prick with I rock. I rock. <laughs> Shut up, you cunt. If you're wondering, what do these question mark rings mean? Usually means you need to perform some excellent platforming to get it. Just gives you a reason to jump on things and explore around. I have the hidden treasure! Yo ho ho and a bottle of it! <laughs> milk? The actual fuck. Since you know me as a terrible explainer and explaining things one level later, the briefcases will hold items for Stuart for health purposes. The green one will reward you an ice cream for health. The blue ones will reward you with empty codes for extra health slots. 
the red ones will award you with extra lives, so always be sure to open these ones up. The red one can only be opened up by throwing items at them. Tail Whip will do nothing at all. The boat minigame is next. All you need to do here is complete four laps of whatever the fuck this track is, get time extensions as you go along, and complete this to win another ring. After we finish collecting the rings to open upstairs, we are given another scene. Congratulations, Stuart. You've collected enough jewelry to enter the next level. Wait. No, that's not how the game started. Stuart was sleeping in an actual bed, not some miniature bed. Game, stay true to the movie. Aw, oh, who am I kidding? We have a child playroom, Stuart and George's room, and the bathroom. Wait, child's playroom? I really need to rewatch this movie again. The mini games on this board are balloon popping and race car driving. So let's try the race car game here really quickly. And it's, it's just the fucking train one, reused. I thought I was gonna drive this time. Around, ah, uh, no fucking matter. This one was a bit more of a challenge, which makes me a little scared for what's to come for in the future star missions. The balloon game is like a shoot 'em gallery with threats at the bottom. Shoot the bug so you don't lose points. Score 500 points to win and receive the ring. I enjoyed this game mode, but the race car did provide a bit more of a challenge. The secret ring is located through this obstacle course in Stewart's bedroom. Climbing up the ladder, glide across, and take a balloon to get to the platform ring for this level. The face block puzzle obstacle is already looking more challenging, which really makes me look forward to the garbage level's antics. <laughs> I'm swimming in the sink and there's nothing you can do about it. Yes, Jupiter! You've collected another Jupiter ring! They better end up fucking somehow or some way. Hold on, just a second. Why am I suddenly thinking about the lifespan of a fucking mouse? All right, we're just gonna say his breed is whatever the fuck that name is. Packy, your me's new prosy. He's as good as fucking dead. He, depending on the great George is in, it would make no sense that he's still alive. That mouse has a five to seven years lifespan, and that's just in captivity. Ah! I find this very hard to believe this is what Stuart saw when he was brought down the sinkhole. See, you can see that it just curves like right around, right, right around there, see? See, there's actually no mystical land uh, known as the sewage. Uh, despite how small you may be, uh, despite the, despite your smallness, uh, there's, there's, there's no way, you know? So, uh, you know, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, so first thing you notice is platforming. And green shit. So let's jump in and. Wow. Thanks, Marglo. I thought I was a goner there for sure. Oh, yeah. They better fuck at this point. If we're gonna notice the most noticeable difficulty spike, there it is. Yep, that sums up my experiences with things and stuff. You know, the music really all sounds the same in this game. Like, it's got such a similar feel to it, and however, yes, the music does say sewage in a way. You always hear the same instruments, like it's the Stuart Little signature. Oh dear god! The first mini game is a skateboard level, and it's actually pretty free roam skateboard. Collect 25 stars in the time frame and pass the mission. This was rather an easy mini game to complete, which I can't complain. It was fun and I enjoyed it. I do hope we get another skateboard level with a little bit more difficulty to it. Want to see an extreme piece of effort for a kid's game to get a movie clip? I think I'll just buy the movie at this point. Yeah! I found the golden key! Now I Yes! I've done it! I've collected enough cat biscuits! Imagine being so excited you cut yourself off from one exciting thing to another exciting thing. Stuart knows no bounds when it comes to excitement, and that... 
That I inspired to be the same. Oh boy, I can't wait to eat this. Applesauce! Yes! The next mini game is another bug race. As you can imagine, this one is probably gonna be a bit harder, but we can still pick up another victory after a few attempts. With that, we move on to back alley and get one step closer to completing the game. We start off with a cutscene that makes no fucking sense. We just saw Marglo save Stuart and now we are meeting her for the first time. But we needed a back alley level and this was the only scene we had to get that level. So by golly, here you go. <laughs> Stuart basically caught her out of the pure luck. Or plot armor so, you know, the movie can fucking happen. And the mouse meets Burb. We start the second to last level here and the difficulty doesn't stop getting harder. The first minigame, after a little bit of distance, is Shoot Balloons minigame. That's the official name, Shoot Balloons. Same point requirements as the previous one. Of course, this one is way more challenging as the bugs are just coming at a constant rate. And they take 50 points away from which adds up if you can't take them. I almost didn't complete it the first time, so my point stands on difficulty, which is nice to see a challenge as the game progresses. The next mini game involves the same car from the cutscene. However, just like the race car and train track, it's a reskin of the boat minigame. Minus the water. There is no water. But rather road. Of course, it's still fun. I would have liked something different for the car. The mission was just as easy as the boat one, showed not even close to the same challenge as Shoot Balloons game. Hey, remember that process to get the last clipper? Stuart. So let's just give this one away, they said. Remember when I said they upped the difficulty on the sewage level? I can honestly say the only difficult thing about this level was the shoot balloons game. Everything else was super manageable. I had my moments on the sewage level, but barely any struggle on back alley. Well, no matter. It's time for the level we've been hyping since the beginning. Garbage! Wonderful, Stuart. You've not only found the hidden ring, but unlocked a new level. Garbage, 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 garbage. Oh, wow, thank you so much for uh, reaching to this point in the video. As you know, it's not bendy, but if you are enjoying it, why not leave the like button? Why not subscribe, you know? I'm going to be doing a lot more review videos in this style. Anyways, um, for now, we're just going to finish this up, and then we're going to move on. All right, well, back to back to your regular sketchly program. Garbage, garbage, garbage. The level starts on the garbage boat. I feel quite at home here. Remember this plane? Remember we broke at Central Park? We found it, and it works. Wait, that means... Oh god, this maneuver skill game is really asking a lot for me. Oh dear Jesus, we almost hit that! What the fuck? And we did it. Did they just reuse the minigame music for this level? They actually did! They actually took the minigame song and they said, yeah, it'll fit for the garbage level. Which, to an extent, it does fit fairly well, considering it's the last level before we face the Drug Lord Falcon. This level is by far more challenging than the back alley. I remember not experiencing much of this level as a child, as I just did not like this level at all. I got the required rings and took on the Falcon. I swear to you, I remember that. <laughs> I spent almost 10 minutes trying to get this face block, only realized maybe I can't get it there, and ended up doing it this way, which was the actual proper way to get that face block. Thanks, false realization. You fucked me this time. This level doesn't give you a clear direction. Let's refer to the chart here. <laughs> if I can just direct your attention quickly to the difficulty chart that I have just created before you here. Uh, as we can notice here, downstairs uh, it was not as difficult. Central Park, just a little difficult, but not as difficult as downstairs. Now, upstairs, upstairs, same level. Same level as Central Park. That's what we're talking about here. Now, here's where it starts to go up. Sewage. Sewage was a pain in the ass. That's okay. We move, but then we go down a back alley and, you know, not as hard. It wasn't as difficult. It's a bit diff more difficult than upstairs, but not the same as, uh, as sewage. <laughs> Don't get that right. But then we go to garbage. Well, yeah, that's basically where shit goes down the toilet. And that is my uh, review of um, every level's difficulty right before your very eyes. Fuck this level, fuck it. 
the next mini game, and thank God it's the skateboard level. I do hope we get another skateboard level with a little bit more difficulty to it. Fuck this level! Our requirement is five rings off this level, but I could easily go back and collect past rings and move on to the Falcon mission. But I need to take on this challenge because God damn it, I need content for this video. So as we finish the last ring, we could move on to the Falcon level. There is no way it could get any harder than that garbage level. Why the fuck did I hype this level at the start? Yes, Jewel. You've collected another jeweled ring. What did this cutscene have anything to do with Garbage Barrage or a Falcon boss? Like, at all. This seemed more like a, you beat the game cutscene. At least the Falcon boss scene is exactly fitting. And we find out taxi drivers at New York are willing to run people over for no goddamn reason. Oh my goodness. This is phenomenal. This is, this was by far the best cutscene in this entire game. However, the boss battle just throws you in and the controls are inverted. This game was doing so well. God, everything just went to shit towards the last two levels. Fuck. So let's see if I can explain this the best I can without screaming my goddamn head off for inverted controls. Collect batteries to get power. Once the bar on the right corner fills up, you can ram your plane into Drug Lord Falcon, collect wrenches to replenish health, and lives on this level are all over. So if you want to farm some lives for whatever the reason is, here's the place. Hit the Falcon five times in a row and get a sad cutscene. No, not that one. I guess they're flying south of the winter, huh? I guess. And get a sad cutscene where they need to separate because birds go south for the winter rather than staying with the family. And this is the last memory Burb had of Stuart. At the end of the day, Stuart Little 2 is one special kind of a game. I enjoyed this game as a child, and despite my frustration with the last two levels, I had fun with it now. Yeah, the core gameplay seems like this game could be completed in a day, if not just a few hours. If you need a quick game to play and just want it to last for the day, pick it up. Give it a try. You can 100% this game, no problem. However, I mainly enjoyed it being masked by nostalgia. It was still fun to pick up and review. Stuart Little is not a perfect game by any means. It got a 62 on Metacritic, which is honestly higher than I was expecting it. The platforming was great. The challenge is here and there. I am a 23 year old man, and I still had my moments where I struggled to get somewhere, whether it be on the sewage level or the garbage level. Would I play this game again just for the heck of it five years from now? Probably. That's how much fun I had. Are you kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? This is the worst thing they could have done. No, why would you? Ah, oh. God, you guys just made everything challenging for me. You've made, I'll make a video on it. <sighs> this is the dumbest thing ever. Well, now I gotta determine what I can review next. What can I do next? Hmm? Kylie Beast has been discontinued. Showdown Bandit is canceled? Well, looks like I know what I'm going to be reviewing next.